In this video, we'll be talking about rendering, oftentimes the last step in your edit when you're ready to export your hard work into a video file or an image or an audio file. So let's get into it. Over in Kena Live, there are multiple ways of accessing your rendering window. One of them is to go to your menu bar inside of project down to render, or you can use the keyboard shortcut control plus return or command plus return on a Mac. This will open the rendering window, this little window over here, we can go ahead and expand it. And at the top here, you have the output file where you can set the destination in the name of your output file. So in this case, let's say I wanted to call this test render underscore v1. And then all the way at the right here, you have this little button, which will open a file explorer. So you can choose the destination of your render and you can also set the name at the top here. And once you're done, simply hit save to confirm. Next, we have the render presets, which are the different profiles that you can use to export your project. Inside of each one of these folders, you have several options and you can see we have the audio only, which means you would only export your audio. You have video with alpha, meaning you would export a video with an alpha channel. So including transparency. And then we have the image sequences, which allow you to export as images. So if you'd like to have a sequence of images or even a GIF, all of these other folders mostly hold video formats. And the most common ones that you might end up using would be between the MP4, H.264. Inside of ultra high definition, you have the MP4, H.265, which from my understanding is becoming an industry standard. The main difference between the H.264 and H.265, the H.265 is more compressed, thus rendering or outputting files of a smaller size, but also requiring more power from your machine in order to play back, but it's great for social media and other online platforms. And here you see it's inside of ultra high definition 4K, but it's not limited to only exporting 4K videos, but it is good for larger files as it has better support. And as I mentioned, renders out smaller size files. Another commonly used format is the MKV, so Matroska H.264. All the way at the bottom here, you also have a few hardware accelerated options. As you see, it's marked as experimental. So choose whichever one your hardware supports and you can see how it runs on your machine. When it comes to presets, you can also create new presets. So at the top here, we have the option to create new presets. And on the side, we have the option to download presets that have been contributed to Kena Live by the community. So inside of here, we have several options that you can simply install. So if you're looking for something like ProRes, there is a ProRes in here. You can also save your current settings as a preset. So if you've modified some of the settings, and we'll look at how you can modify some of the settings here in just a moment. And finally, if you've created custom presets, like I have here with a couple ProRes profiles that I've made, you get the option of the pencil here, which allows you to edit your own presets, those that you've created yourself. And of course, the trash bin, if you'd like to delete the presets that you've created. Finally, at the bottom here, we have these three toggles, which determine what on the timeline will be rendered. The first one being full project, and this means it will render everything on your timeline. So if ever you had something pushed aside for later use or whatever, it will be included in the render because it is on the timeline. Next to that, we have selected zone and selected zone refers to the in and out points on your timeline. So if I were to move this window below, this blue line at the top here, is the selected zone. So if you put an in point and then an out point, this blue area becomes the selected zone. And this is what selected zone is referring to. Next, we have the guide zone. And the guide zone refers to the guides that you have on the timeline. In my case, if you look, I have chapter one, chapter two, and chapter three. So you can use them as in and out points. So from, let's say, chapter one to chapter two, or even chapter three. And of course you have the end point over here and the end point is the very last frame of whatever is on the timeline. Kaden Live also offers the option to do multi export using the guides and you can activate it by using this checkbox down here. And then you would choose either all categories. So that would include all the markers, which the categories are marked by the different colors, or you can simply export based off of the categories. So the colors, we'll look at this in just a moment. Now, finally, you have the more option, and this is where you get to customize your output settings a bit more. So if we expand this over here at the very top, you can see we have video and we'll get into the details. But before we do, if you were to choose a profile such as audio only, so let's say flat, you'll see video get disabled. And that is because obviously you're rendering an audio file, excluding the video. 
At the very top, we have interpolation. And the interpolation relates to the rescale option that we have down here in the checkbox. This determines the quality of the rescale. So obviously you have a few uh, pointers and parentheses here, but of course go with what works best for you. Underneath that, we have the deinterlacer. So if you're working with interlace footage and you would like to deinterlace it on the output, this is where you determine the quality of the deinterlacing. Next, we have the render full color range, and this allows you to output your videos with full color range. In other words, 10 bit color range. Now, it's important to note that at the time of this recording, this only applies to your timeline if there are no effects applied. Not to worry, the upcoming versions of KDN Live will support 10 to 12 bit color range despite effects or no effects. So stay tuned for that update. Next, we have the render at preview resolution. This is referring to the preview resolution of the project monitor. So if you have it set to anything other than a one-to-one, -one, it will render at the resolution that you have selected. This can be used for rendering previews or anything that you might use as a reference and you don't want to render the full resolution. Let's say you're working at 4K or 2K and you simply want to output something quickly at a lower resolution. This is a nice way of going about it. After that, we have the use proxy clips which I believe is self-explanatory. If you are using proxy clips in your edit, then you can check this checkbox to use the proxy clips for your renders, thus giving you something maybe again for a reference, or if you're collaborating with someone, they're working on VFX and they just need something for the timing, you can always use this option so that you get a quick light render that someone else can use as a reference or for yourself. And now we go back to the rescale that I mentioned earlier. If you enable rescale, this allows you to change the dimensions of your output. Now, I do have a video that shows you how to go from a horizontal video to a vertical video or landscape to portrait. I'll leave the link down in the description. And underneath, we'll look at overlay in just a moment, but you also have aspect ratio. And the aspect ratio allows you to change from either 16 by 9 to 9 by 16 or 1 by 1 or from 9 16 to 16 by 9. Now, when switching aspect ratios, this does not change the dimensions of the project itself, which is why you have the rescale on top. So if you were going from a horizontal 16 by 9 to a vertical 9 by 16, but your resolution or your project profile is only set to 1080, then your output is not actually going to be scaled up. Again, I have a video showing you how to go from horizontal to vertical, which might explain a bit more how this works. Just keep in mind that if you are using the rescale, to set your interpolation to something a bit higher if you do not want to lose too much quality if you're going from smaller to bigger. And lastly, we have the overlay. Now, overlay will simply overlay whatever information you choose here over your video. So it could be a time code, again, for reference if working with VFX or doing a revision of the edit. You have the option for time code with non drop frames and the frame number. Again, these are great for references, especially when working in collaboration or when you need to uh, synchronize some VFX or something else with your current edit. Next up, we're moving to audio. Now, if you uncheck audio, you can render a video with no audio track at all. And part of the audio options is the separate file for each audio track. Next, we have the custom quality. Now, the custom quality is not available for all output profiles. For example, if I were to go to Lossless HQ and choose, let's say, one of the ProRes, you'll see that the custom quality gets grayed out. This is because the quality is now being determined by the profile that we've selected. But if we're using MP4, H.264, or H.265, you can choose to increase or decrease the quality of your output simply by sliding the slider up or down. Underneath that, we have the encoder. This is for the encoder speed. You can choose to go ultra fast by sliding it all the way to the right, or you can go real time by going further to the left. Now, understand that the faster it is, the more prone it is to certain little errors and the larger your file might come out. You also have the option to choose how many threads you would like to use if you have a CPU that's multi-threaded. Next up, we have the parallel processing. Now, the parallel processing, as they mentioned here, when you enable it, they let you know that it may cause artifacts. I personally rarely ever run into any issues using the parallel processing, but if you are getting black frames or certain errors during render or after rendering artifacts or such, you can disable the parallel processing. Just know that this will drastically slow down the render speed. In other words, it will increase the amount of time that it takes to output or render your project. Down here, you also get the option to choose how many threads you would like KDLive to use. So by default, I believe it uses half of your available threads. 
Now at the bottom here, we have a few extra checkboxes. So you can export metadata. And if you go to edit metadata, you can add title, author, copyright, year, etc. And these are supported by MP4 container and the MKV, so Matroska container. Canonlive also offers the option to embed your subtitles instead of burning them directly onto your video. Now, this option is currently grayed out and is only available, as far as I know, inside of Matroska. So if I choose Matroska as the output, so MKV, you can see now we have the option to embed instead of burning onto the video. And finally, you have the option to open the destination folder after export or to simply play the video after exporting. Now, this little box at the bottom here with the information that you see allows you to see the specification of each profile or whichever profile that you're going to use or that you have selected. So you can see how the information changes. This is the same sort of information that you can input when creating a custom preset. So if I were to click on the little plus for custom preset, you can choose which folder you'd like to put the preset in, choose a name, and then you have all of the information that you can input manually, or you can go to other and enable manual editing if you know what you're doing and you can manually input all of the parameters in here and simply hit OK to save it. And for those of you familiar with sequences, if you do have multiple sequences, Kidalive will render the sequence that was active at the moment of opening the rendering window. So just for demonstration, I'll enable the guide multi-export and I'll hit render to file. Over here, we have the job queue, which lets us know what is being exported, or rather, we can see the progress of our exports. And if you ever run into an error, you will get a small error window detailing some of the errors that occurred during render. And the best part is while it's rendering, you can still do edits on the timeline and it will not affect the renders that you have. Once Caden Live is done rendering, you can right click on your render. You can either open the containing folder or you can add this output back into the project that you're working on with the add to current project and then at the bottom right here you have the option to share your export so there are a few options in here that you can select from and last but not least you have the scripts and this is for you more technical users out there i'm not very familiar with scripts that's it for rendering you can click on this playlist here to learn more about getting live and thanks for watching